So Anthony from Los Angeles um, sent in this question, and uh, and you're too old to answer this first, Phil. You get the next one. Um, he said, so I became a Christian at L.A. Occupy. I grew up in an atheist Jewish home of leftists and didn't know how to ask a spiritual question until an old Lutheran minister was preaching an Oscar Romero sermon with a people's mic. I have figured out how to ask a spiritual question. Then I just started typing stuff in and listened to the Jer Jeremy's Occupy with Whitehead podcast. I got really into John Cobb and Rita and Jorg, and since then I can't even find a minister saying any of this at a church in Los Angeles. <laughs> Why? I just finished the Gospel of Matthew and Mark for the first time. This stuff is freaking awesome, and it seems pretty obvious where the church should stand in light of the Occupy movement. It would be really cool if you asked all these nerds as a new Christian who wants to get some protesting on where we should go and why is it that the people who have these texts uh, continue to preach sermon after sermon that doesn't ring to my heart um, like Oscars did. Wait, is he asking for a church recommendation? No, I, <laughs> but I think I think he's asking why why is it as people who are young and look at wait, Ignate, yeah <laughs> we'll send the direct tweet yeah. but um uh, but wh why is it as uh, as kind of a younger people who are who are resonating with this and all of a sudden he heard a spiritual question for the first time right at an Occupy protest and so uh, what do you think it is that has let so many people not even see the church as a spiritual place has never said a word that evoked something spiritual but then all of a sudden this did and uh, wh what would the church look like if we created this kind of place um, where, uh, where people who are committed to justice all of a sudden found some divine energy to put in the middle of it I mean I think the distinction that we have falsely tried to impose between the sacred and the profane, which leads to communities, faith communities within walls of churches that are completely disconnected from not only the, the lives, like the outside of the church, but from the everyday embodied lived realities of the people who even attend that church. And so if we can sort of move beyond this distinction that we, you know, what the sacred versus the profane and actually say, um, I, I think why you can why this person is having a spiritual encounter at an Occupy movement is because it's speaking to the everyday lived embodied reality as opposed to trying to impose this false distinction about a theology that is abstract and a theology is about, um, you know, the right belief as opposed to the right action. It should be both. And so, I don't know, that's my answer. Mm. Um, so, uh, Danielle from Texas writes, Protestantism was the religious shape of modernity, like other institutional forms, capitalism, nation states, democracies, and such. Can a post-occupied church pretend these institutions are final? Where could a new expression of faith communities emerge? What should they learn from the Occupy movement? Or is the church stuck in a form committed to a world shaped by capitalism, democracies, nation states, and such? Um, okay. Um, <clears throat> well, one of the important things I've learned from both Whitehead and Marx is that um, abstractions are not final, and capitalism is an abstraction. Uh, it's something that we've created. It's not a reality that uh, is essential or has to be, so there can be other realities. Um, and then I think there are movements uh, that are that see capitalism as an abstraction and they're attempting to do something all very alternative. Um, so Philip mentioned new monasticism. Shane Claiborne uh, has been a big part of that and he's even stopped speaking uh, because he just wants to be in his community uh, and live faithfully. So there are certainly models out there like that um, that um, I think other groups could and should pursue. How would you do theological education for a uh, post-Occupy uh, minister if they aren't going to get all the health care benefits and retirement plans and all those things that the Methodist Church no longer wants to promise to its graduates and other denominations are having the same things? How's that changed the economic model of theological education? Yeah, we have to do it radically differently. People can't afford to come and, and live by a seminary for uh, for three years. So they'll have to be intensive classes that come together for a week at a time. You keep your job. You stay where you are located. 
uh, and then you come, you do some online work, and then you come for some really intense 40 hours in one week, Monday to Friday. You'll just be like a limp rag when you're done, but it'll be awesome. You'll be <laughs> deconstructed and reconstructed in 40 hours, you know, flat. Um, uh, or a ministry education where you you start, you're already in a ministry, you're in you're in a community organizing or a church, and you never leave, and and you get mentors and you work with a cohort and you're all located around the country, but you stay in that position of ministry, but there's something deeper, and I I mean, hesitate to name it, it might be a little bit too much, for this uh, careful astute broadcast called Homebrewed, but the um, when we when we recognize is the last question uh, asked from Texas that. A lot of the form of the church as an institution was, was deeply rooted in modernity, and it is deeply rooted in individualism and capitalism, which are not Jesus' values, if I can just put that kind of bluntly there. Then um, other, and we, so we have to leave that modernity behind, something that you were already signaling toward the, the postmodern world. The trouble is that isms are a part of modernity too. And whoa, you mean we have to make this little transition without our isms? and start rebuilding all over again from what Donna Haraway calls situated knowledge, that location where your body is, your language is, and your face color is, that that's all relevant now? Whoa, right? You can't just go back to Constantine or we can't just go back to a creed and, and have it all right? Whoa. But I do think that that's the fiery brook that we have to go through. The baptism by fire in the transition from modern institutions to postmodern institutions Institutions, they'll come eventually. There'll be movements at first. From modern belief forms to postmodern belief forms. Occupy the church is not just a matter of feeding homeless in that church basement once a week, you know, or showing up with a few extra items of clothes that no longer fit and are too ragged and giving them away to someone, you know, who, who doesn't have anything or, you know, a pair of socks now and then. You get reconstructed, and that one hurts. You got to spend some time homeless, police speaking, homeless in terms of identity, homeless in terms of who are my friends, who are my brothers and sisters. And when you rebuild that one, then boy, we got an Occupy that's going to stick. 